In fact, he has become a willing case study for researchers who are trying to unlock the brain's mysteries. One of the difficulties researchers encounter in studying the human brain is its inaccessibility. Brain imaging technologies such as CT scans, PET scans and MRIs make the process easier by giving researchers the ability to see inside the organ in a variety of different ways. There are two kinds of imaging technologies. Structural imaging allows us to see the structure within the body. Functional imaging reveals the brain in action. Hey, this is an MRI scan that was taken a few weeks before Guy had his surgery and you can see on this that the right hemisphere is fully normal. There's absolutely nothing wrong as far as we can see. However, the left hemisphere, which should be a mirror image of the right, has had a lot of damage, especially at the back part of that uh, brain. You can see that the area is much darker, that the tissue has been lost. Uh, we recently did a uh, repeat CT scan on Guy to see uh, the structure of his brain and very clearly that right hemisphere looks entirely normal but interestingly what we see is that the area of the left hemisphere is much smaller than it would normally have been because the right side has grown over towards that side and I don't know if that's really that there's more brain or the brain grows to an area where there's less pressure um, but clearly that left side is shrunken down a lot with just a little bit of fluid left in it. The functional MRI scanner is a great advance in our ability to see what's going on inside the brain. And it works by differentiating the amount of blood that's going to a part of the brain. So if I decide that I want to move my hand like this, this part of my brain has to become active to do that. The MR detector system can pick up that little change in the blood flow and compare it to what it was before and then we get a picture that shows this part of the brain lighting up just a little bit so we can do it with motor system we can do it with language we can do it with almost any uh, function that the body has the ability to observe the functioning brain has brought researchers closer to understanding the inner workings of this our most vital organ one of the discoveries they have made concerns the effects of an enriched environment we know that if our little child sits by himself all the time and doesn't have access to books and toys and enrichment and friends, he doesn't develop his intellectual capacity to the same degree that one does when you're stimulating the whole cerebral cortex. We call it multisensory stimulation. If we put a rat in just a maze and he only learns to run a difficult maze, only one area of his cortex changes. But if we put him in our enriched environment with lots of friends and lots of toys, and we change those, because it's terribly important to change the toys, the rats get tired just like we do, then we get the whole cortex to increase. It's very clear to me that the children who be do best developmentally are children whose parents are really dedicated to helping them every way that they can to provide every opportunity for learning that they can. Um, that enriched environment is absolutely critical for the, for the best developmental outcome to occur. Uh, it's true for every child, but it's especially true for a child who's had a brain injury like this. An enriched environment is crucial throughout life. An impoverished environment, one that lacks stimulation, love, and interaction, is harmful to all ages. Guy Gabalich has been fortunate enough to experience firsthand the positive effects of an enriched environment, thanks in no small part to the efforts of his mother. Well, I don't think there's any question but that his mother's dedication has had a very important um, impact on his developmental outcome. He's done so well because his mother has worked so hard to help him do this well.